Today's lesson is called The Strange Ways Animals Sleep. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. I am Roger. I'm、uh, not tired right now. I'm very awake. I've、uh, been getting plenty of exercise and eating well. And I had an apple this morning as well. Someone told me that an apple works better to keep you awake than a cup of coffee does. So I don't have any sleep problems at all. And I'm not implying that animals have sleeping problems, but they do have some rather unusual sleeping habits. We've been talking about the strange ways in which animals sleep. Last time we talked about dolphins. They kind of sleep with half of their brain shut off, and we also talked about the albatross, which is a big ocean bird. They actually sleep when they're flying. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started with day two of our lesson on the strange ways that animals sleep. Sea otters hold hands while sleeping. Sea otters holding hands while they sleep is not only adorable but also very practical. Since these furry marine mammals float on their backs while they sleep, there's risk that they might float away from their fellow otters or even drift out to sea. To prevent this, they hold hands with each other or wrap themselves in seaweed attached to the sea floor. 大家好，首先在第一部分，我们看到的是形容词 adorable， 指可爱的或讨喜的。例如 ，Joan got an adorable kitten from the animal shelter. Joan 从动物收容所领养了一只可爱的小猫，而 adorable 的动词则为 adore, a d o r e， 有喜欢、爱慕之意。举例来说 ，Kelly adored the gift her daughter bought her. Kelly 喜欢女儿买给她的礼物。接下来是形容词 furry， 意思是毛茸茸的或毛皮覆盖的。例如 ，We put a furry blanket on the floor for the old cat to lie on. 我们在地板上铺了一张毛皮毯子给那只老猫躺。而 furry 这个字如果去掉字尾 r y， 就会变成名词 fur， 指的是动物身上的毛皮。像是 the bear's fur is very thick and it helps the bear stay warm during winter。熊的毛很厚，可帮助熊在冬季保持温暖。再来看到的单字是 seaweed， 这个字是名词，指的是海藻或海草。例如 ，a lot of animals living in the ocean eat the seaweed that grows there. 生活在海洋中的许多动物会以海中生长的海草为食。其中字尾 weed, w e e d 这个字可以当名词，也可以当动词使用。举例来说，当名词时有野草、杂草的意思。Fiona pulled the weeds out of the ground to give her flowers room to grow. Fiona 拔掉地上的杂草，让它的花有空间生长。而 weed 当动词的时候，则是指除草。To take care of the garden, you will need to water and weed it every day. 你必须每天浇水和除草来照顾花园。Okay, so far we've talked about the unusual sleeping habits of dolphins and albatrosses, and today we're going to talk about sea otters, which I think is a high ta in Chinese. A sea otter, boy, they are so cute. They're furry and they live in the ocean, and they can come up on the land too. I think there's an otter in the Taipei Zoo. It's oh so cute. But in any case, sea otters hold hands. While sleeping, isn't that sweet? Okay, they actually hold hands just like lovers do, or just like young children sometimes do. They actually hold hands. Now, sea otters holding hands while they sleep is not only adorable but also very practical. So, of course, if you see sea otters holding hands, you're gonna go, "Oh, that is so adorable!" Adorable means. Means it's really cute. It's something that you would really love to see. How can I? Oh, well, very often you'll see a little dog on the MRT or something like that, and you won't be able to hold it back. You'll say, "How can I?" Oh, yes, that's a cute dog. That's an adorable dog. You want to hug it right then 
and there. And by the way, sea otters are definitely adorable. Anyways, more on sea otters. Since these furry marine mammals float on their backs while they sleep, there's a risk that they might float away from their fellow otters or even drift out to sea. So this is why they hold hands. It's for safety's sake. Now, we've got a few things to talk about here. First of all, we have the word marine. This word is simple. The word marine describes something that is related to the ocean, like a marine biologist will study things that live in the ocean, forms of life to be found in the ocean. That's what marine is all about. It's an adjective. Yes, marine is an adjective that describes the oceans. I believe the word lunar is an adjective that describes the moon. I believe that the adjective to describe the Earth would be terrestrial. Okay, and that's kind of a tough one. So I'll spell that right now. T-E-R-R-E-S T-R-I-A-L, terrestrial. Anyways, then we also have the word mammal. On day one, we talked about dolphins. Dolphins are mammals. They're marine mammals, as are whales and sea otters as well. But what is a mammal? A mammal is an animal that gives birth to live babies. That's the first part. No eggs or anything like that. They give birth to live babies. <laughs> They don't lay eggs, like I said before. And yes, mommy mammals have milk that they can feed their children with. By the way, we human beings are mammals. And yes, mammals, by the way, another fun fact, mammals usually have hair or fur. Then last but not least, okay, remember, these sea otters, they hold hands while sleeping because they don't want to float away or drift out to sea. Yes, if you drift out to sea, you are carried away by seawater. You kind of let yourself be taken away by water. You don't let the water take you. It kind of just happens. You don't try to swim or fight it or anything like that. By the way, you can drift on a current or with the tide, or you can also drift on the air. Yeah, one time I put a message in a bottle and I threw it in the ocean. And as far as I know, it's still out there drifting in the ocean. No one has written me back yet. But in any case, yes, these otters are afraid that they might drift out to sea. They'll drift further out into the ocean, never to be seen again. So they stop this by holding hands with each other to stop drifting out to sea. So again, it says here to prevent this or to stop this, they hold hands with each other or they wrap themselves in seaweed attached to the sea floor. So of course, seaweed, of course, refers to plants that grow in the ocean and they wrap themselves in this seaweed and that seaweed is attached to the sea floor. Attached means connected. It's fixed to the ocean floor so that they won't drift away. It's kind of like they're using seaweed as an anchor. Mm, and that kind of sounds scary. Remember, like dolphins, sea otters are mammals, so they have to come to the surface to breathe. So they... The holding hands thing, that's very cute. But to wrap yourself in seaweed, that's like you're tying yourself up underwater. Ooh, I hope that they can breathe. I would hate to see one of those very cute creatures drown like that. Oof. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Giraffes hardly ever sleep. These gentle giants are large and slow, making them easy targets for predators. To stay safe, they sleep in 5-minute increments for a total of 20 to 30 minutes per day. If necessary, they can even go without sleep for weeks. When they do sleep, they usually do it standing up. Due to their long legs, getting up from the ground can take time, which puts them at risk of being attacked. 第二部分我们看到的单字是 increment， 这个字是名词，表示变额、增量。例如 ，You need to work hard to fight for salary increments. 你必须努力工作以求加薪。
而 increment 的形容词为 incremental, I N C R E M E N T A L， 指的是递增的、增加的。例如 ，The purchaser decides to make incremental orders to the new product since it gets more and more popular. 由于新产品越来越热门，采购员决定增加它的订购量。最后，我们看到一个片语 ，put somebody or something at risk。意思是将某人或某事物置于险境。举例来说 ，I am afraid that the product the other company released today will put our sales at risk. 我很担心另外那间公司今天刚发行的产品会将我们的销售量置于险境。而另一个片语 ，put somebody or something in danger， 后面接上 of 加名词或动词 ing， 也可以用来表示置于点点点的险境。或有点点点的风险，例如 ，not washing hands clearly before eating can put people in danger of virus infection. 没有在进食前将手彻底洗干净，会让人有病毒感染的风险。Okay, we've been talking about some unusual sleeping habits of various animals. We just got done talking about sea otters and how they sleep while holding hands. Now let's talk about a land animal, specifically a land animal from Africa, the giraffe. You know, Chang Jing Lu, the giraffe. Giraffes hardly ever sleep; they almost go totally without sleeping at all. Now these gentle giants are large and slow, making them easy targets for predators. And if you've ever seen. Giraffes, you'll know that they're actually quite gentle. They're not aggressive. They don't run fast. They're not crazy. They don't attack other animals. They are gentle, and we're describing them as being gentle giants. They are large. Yes, they're very big, but they're also very slow, and that makes them an easy target for predators like lions or something like that. They're so slow that they can be easily attacked by meat-eating animals, as I said, like a lion. So giraffes—they're the really tall animals with the really long necks. So they're easy targets. They're huge, first of all, and you can see them anywhere. Their heads are way up in the sky. They're gigantic. They can't hide, so they're easy targets. You can't miss them. And on top of that, they're kind of slow and large, so they're easy targets. Lions love to chow down on giraffes. So if giraffes decided to kind of lay down for an eight-hour snooze. They just wouldn't make it. So to stay safe, they sleep in five-minute increments for a total of twenty to thirty minutes per day. I believe that Leonardo da Vinci used to sleep like this too. He would only sleep in small increments every hour because he didn't want to be asleep for a really long time. Apparently, he didn't want to miss the creative ideas that were constantly flowing through his head. Right, increments, just small increases. Sometimes cars stopped at red lights move forward at increments. They move a few inches forward, then they stop, and then they do it again. They slowly move forward until the light turns green. But in this particular case, they just sleep in smaller periods, five-minute increments, and that all adds up to a total of twenty to thirty minutes per day. They only sleep. For that amount of time on a daily basis, and if necessary, they can even go without sleep for weeks. So yes, they could have that twenty to thirty minutes per day if they need it. Not all at once, of course, but if it's needed, if it's necessary. For example, if they need to avoid a bunch of lions for several days, or if they need to travel for long distances, they could go without sleep. For weeks, they don't need to sleep for lots and lots of time. And get this: when they do sleep, they usually do it standing up. Yes, if they were going to be attacked, they couldn't get up very quickly and run away because they're so big. So when they do sleep, they don't sit down or lay down or anything like that. When they sleep, they do it. 
standing up. So if they do wake up during three or four minutes of sleep or something like that, they'll be ready to run, ready to get out of there when a predator or something like that starts attacking them. Now, due to their long legs, our article continues, getting up from the ground can take time, which puts them at risk of being attacked. So there you go. It's difficult for them to get up, like I said before. So they always have to be prepared to escape. So they sleep standing up. If they lay down or sat down, it might take a minute for them to stand up. And that's way too long when a lion is on your tail. Now, it says here that if they were to sleep while sitting down or laying down, that this would put them at risk of being attacked, i.e. this would put them in danger or it would put them in harm's way. For example, smoking cigarettes puts you at risk for heart disease. It does. So please don't start smoking cigarettes. They're bad for your health. They put you at risk of various diseases. But yes, if you are a giraffe and a lion is nearby, it's just going to take you too much time to stand up. By the time you stand up, the lion will have already attacked you and will already start to eat you. So yes, watch out for that. If you're a giraffe, you better stay on your toes. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson. Let's listen to the third part right now. With different perils come different ways of sleeping. Whether that means sleeping while flying or holding the hand of a friend, every animal has developed a sleeping style that helps it survive in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of the animal kingdom. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up our lesson on the strange ways that animals sleep. I've had a good time over the last couple of days. Me but, too. But alas, folks, all good things must come to an end. Anyways, with different perils come different ways of sleeping. So these ways of sleeping, they're not necessarily strange. It's just that animals react to danger and perils in different ways, and their sleep is affected thusly. Anyways, let's talk about this word perils right now. A peril is a danger. It's a threat. It's something that puts you in danger. Right. With these perils, because of these perils, because of these dangerous situations, we have different ways of sleeping. Because there are different dangers, then we have different ways of sleeping for different kinds of animals. And whether that means sleeping while flying or holding the hand of a friend, every animal has developed a sleeping style that helps it survive in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of the animal kingdom. Okay, so indeed, whether that means sleeping while flying, or if that means you got to sleep when you're flying, or if it means you got to hold someone's hand while you're floating on the ocean, or if you have to have half of your brain shut off while you're sleeping, well, it doesn't matter because every animal has a unique, special kind of sleeping style, and these sleeping styles help that animal survive in this dog-eat-dog -dog world. Ooh, that doesn't sound very optimistic there. A dog-eat-dog -dog world. Everyone out for himself. It's every man for himself. Everybody's going to kill you. Kill or be killed, as Jack London used to say. Kill or be killed. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and if you actually happen to be prey and you can't eat your predators, make sure you learn how to sleep efficiently so you can still get some shut eye even though you are always in mortal danger. Anyways, all jokes aside, our lesson is now complete and it's time for you guys to hear from the Chinese teacher. These gentle giants are large and slow. 
making them easy targets for predators. 这些温和的巨型动物体型庞大，而且动作缓慢，这使它们很容易成为掠食者的攻击目标。那这个句子它的后半句啊，本来可以写作 which makes them easy targets for predators. 那么 which 是用来代指前方子句，也就是 these gentle giants are large and slow. 这些温和巨型动物体型庞大，而且动作缓慢的这一件事，我们用 which 来代指。它，那么 which makes them easy targets for predators 就表示这件事使长颈鹿很容易成为掠食者的攻击目标。那现在我们可以把 which 省略，再把动词 makes 改成现在分词 making， 那句子就会简化成 making them easy targets for predators。好，那么另外要补充一个重点是句型 make 加受词加受词补语，这表示说使什么成为什么，使什么变得怎么样。那 make 在这边它表示使成为或是使变得，它的受词补语常常会用名词啊或是形容词，像课文里面就是用名词 easy targets 来当受词补语。那我们来造两个例句。This app makes learning fun. 这个应用程序让学习变得很好玩。那句子里面的受词补语就是用形容词 fun。再看个例句 ：His performance in the movie made him a superstar. 他在那部电影里面的演出使他成为超级巨星。那句子里面用到的受词补语是名词 a superstar。接着读到课文第二部分的最后一句，他说 ：Due to their long legs. Getting up from the ground can take time, which puts them at risk of being attacked. 由于他们脚很长，从地面上站起来会很花时间，会使他们置于被攻击的险境。那句子里面的 which 同样是用来代指前方的子句，也就是指说他们从地面上站起来会很花时间的这件事。然后 which puts them at risk of being attacked 就表示说这件事呢会使长颈鹿置于被攻击的险境。我们顺便来学习怎么用英文来表达将什么置于险境。课文里面呢，它用到 put somebody or something at risk， 这个意思就跟 put somebody or something in danger 是一样的。那我们还可以用及物动词 in danger， e n d a n g e r， 这个动词它表示危急或是使什么遭到危险，那它后面可以接人或是事物。另外再补充两个意思很接近的用法。Pose a danger to somebody or something 也可以指对某人或某事物造成危险。那其中这个动词 pose 就有造成啊，或是引起的意思。那还有一个片语叫做 put somebody or something in harm's way。这句意思是说使某人或某事物身处险境。Harm 当名词呢，有伤害、危害的意思。那 in harm's way 就表示处于险境。相反的，如果你说 out of harm's way， 这表示说离开险境啊，或者是在安全的地方。举例来说 ，He got the dog out of harm's way before the fire spread. 在火势开始蔓延之前，他把狗狗带到安全的地方了。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Marine. While diving, be careful not to touch any of the marine life. Mammal. Some people believe dolphins are fish, but they are actually mammals. Drift. Make sure you tie the boat to the dock, or it will drift away. Attach. You must attach two recent photographs of yourself to the form. Peril. Many people warn Stephanie about the perils of traveling alone. But she decided to do it anyway. Discussion starter starts now. All right, folks, it's time for our discussion starter. Roger, which of these sleeping habits did you find the most surprising? Well, I was surprised that albatrosses actually fly. While they're sleeping, that is unusual. I can't imagine how they could do that, but I guess they've worked it out somehow because albatrosses live all over the world and keep on sleeping every night. How about you? Well, I always imagined that sleep was super important, and I never imagined for one second that there was an animal out there that could, for the most part, go without sleeping. But there you have it. 
giraffes, they can go weeks without sleeping. That's an amazing fact. On a good day, a giraffe might only sleep like 30 minutes or so. That is amazing to me. Okay, everyone, with that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, See you next, next time. time.